Hi guys, welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. Today's video, I'm going to fly a raw data ILS approach into Dublin using my company's operating procedures. Now, the raw data ILS is an ILS approach flown without having the flight directors on for guidance, and we use this to help crews develop their instrument scan and their handling skills of the aircraft. It's completely manually flown with the flight directors off from an intercept heading at the platform altitude, intercepting the localizer and glide path manually, uh, and then all the way to a landing. Now, when I fly this raw data ILS, or I should say attempt to fly this raw data ILS using the PMD GNGX, I'm going to talk you through exactly what I'm doing in my head, so you can then practice it using uh, Flight Simulator at home. Okay, so I'm on the final intercept heading now, I've just configured to flat 5 and match the speed. I'm now going to disconnect the autopilot and auto throttle and turn off the flight director. So what I'm going to do is put the PFD and ND to help uh, me fly this as accurately as possible. So the key to flying a raw data ILS approach is pitch and power, knowing the settings. I've just got the thrust at idle as we're just reducing thrust, I'm just descending back to 2,500 feet. And now I'm going to add the thrust now to maintain uh, about 165 knots to stop it accelerating there. And you notice my attitude, it's about 5 degrees to maintain 2,500 feet. So we say for flat 5 level flight, about 5 degrees and about 55% N1. I'm just reducing a little bit of thrust though to help the aeroplane uh, decelerate. Now I'm scanning all the time, I'm looking at the altitude, my attitude, the rate of descent on the IVSI, now looking at the ND in anticipation of capturing the localizer and turning finals. I'm just maintaining two and a half thousand feet, making constant corrections to the controls. So looking there, preparation for turning final speed's good. Maintaining two and a half thousand feet. Now I'm just gonna start turning final. And you can look at the ND, there's a little white thing, it's quite hard to see, but it's called the trend vector. And I'm using that to, to maintain the, the sensor line. Now the localizer's alive, see the aircraft descended slightly because we're in the turn that's quite normal I'm using that trend vector to get on the extended center line just want to maintain two and a half thousand feet so just scanning my altitude just pitch up a little bit to get up now the localizer is coming in nicely I will set on the track display 279 which is the inbound course maintain that heading look and you can see I'm scanning my altitude so I've descended slightly so I'm just going to pitch up to get back up to two and a half thousand feet there we go slightly there adding the thrust speed is good and just continuing that turn now onto the localizer now I'm going to maintain that track there's the glide slope alive so glide slope alive will configure gear down flat 15 and imagine that we've done the landing checklist to flap so I'll just match the speed as well uh, I did the landing checklist earlier, I just need to configure the landing flap uh, because obviously it's a multi-crew environment. So the localizer is still slightly right, so I'm going to alter my track slightly, just maintaining 2,500 feet. I'm just going to match the runway heading as well, which I forgot to do as well. It's quite difficult doing all this alone, flying manually. Uh, there we go, pitching down, so I just don't want to do that, maintain 2,500 feet. I'm just maintaining a track of 277 just to get back onto the localizer. So about to get glide slope capture, just a bit low on speed. So glide slope capture, what we do is select the landing flap, which is going to be flat 30 today, uh, match the speed, which is VREF plus 5. And now I'm going to pitch for about 2.5 degrees and set about 57%, which is our reference altitude. And our rate of descent required is five times our ground speed. So you can see our ground speed is about 150 knots. It's about 800 feet per minute to maintain the flight path. So still scanning. And it's all about making small inputs and early corrections to fly this accurately. Localizer's coming in. So I'm just going to put the track back to about 279, which is the inbound track required to, to maintain the localizer. There's 279. And I've got a decent rate of descent. So we then complete the landing checklist, so uh, the flaps are set to 30, but the green light, the landing lights are already on, but we'll imagine we have been clicked on that. Now as we further on progress down the ILS, it becomes a lot more sensitive as we get closer. And uh, just essentially, the main thing I'm looking at is my attitude, okay, that's the key to this approach, knowing what attitude to fly. And you can see the IVSI is very accurate, that tells you instantaneously what your uh, current rate of descent is on a light aircraft it's a little bit delayed I'm just got a slightly higher rate of descent on the lights I'm just pitching up a little bit further speed is good 
Localise is good, just going to go slightly to the left because I don't want to track off to the right of the localizer. Glide path slightly low, so I'm just going to pitch up again slightly above two and a half degrees. There we go, reduce the rate of descent to about 500 feet per minute. Get back onto the glide path. There we go, slightly left of centre line. So again, a slight track to the right, looking at the track. Looking good again. Okay, maintain that wings level now on the glide path. You can see how my altitude has barely changed now. It's about one degree and about 62% today, uh, which is the altitude pitch and thrust setting I'm using. Bowser feet's checked. Speed's a tad high, just reducing a little bit of thrust. Just don't want to descend too quickly. Uh, see the runway ahead now slowly coming into view slightly drifting to the right pitching up slightly so I don't want that to happen so you see how sensitive it's getting now uh, as we get close to the threshold the key is when you become visual try not to look outside because you can then dive for the runway which is not ideal so I'm really staring at getting ever so high on our the glide pass I'm just going to pitch down make a, a decent correction that's a bit too aggressive by myself there that's a very high rate of set back to two and a half degrees onto the glide path and now you can see the runway approach lights approaching in sight oh you can see how sensitive it is it's very difficult using this joystick looking outside then a little bit now looking for the pappies there's two reds two whites visually coming in there, a little bit high on speed, so reducing a bit of thrust, minimums we can land, three reds, a little bit low, pitching up slightly over the threshold at 50 feet, check, close the thrust levers, holding that attitude, touching down, oh, a little bit of a float again, there we go, so speed brakes up, select and reverse thrust, let's get rid of the PFA D and ND to make it a little bit tighter. God, that was a, a busy approach, but that is what a raw data ILS is very busy, constantly scanning all the time. Go to either reverse, and I'll just bring the aircraft to a stop on the runway. There we go, and set the parking brake. So guys, that was the raw data ILS. I hope you found that interesting and learned something new, and hopefully that will encourage you to perhaps try fly a raw data ILS using the PMDG NGX yourself. Uh, I'd also encourage you to do that if you want to become an airline pilot in the future because it really improves your hand-eye coordination. And a lot of the airlines do these tests now to, to test your hand-eye coordination and this is perfect practice and preparation for that. Uh, I'll be popping this playlist in the virtual type rating uh, folder which includes lots of exercises and it will include more tutorials in the future uh, based on guidance and things we teach in the time rating. Anyway, I really appreciate the thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Fly safe and I'll see you again for another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial in the very near future. Take care and bye-bye.